Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana, which is one of the most, the greatest food cities and always exciting cities in the United States. Today we're going on an ultimate food tour of the French Quarter. And the French Quarter is the center of the city. This is where the city began. And we're gonna eat some of the legendary food, some of the historic food. I don't know if you're supposed to shot it or you're supposed to spoon it. Let's, let's shot it. Especially focusing on Creole food. Mm. So it's all coming up in this video. I cannot wait to explore this city and share all of the food with you from the French Quarter right now. You ready for this ultimate? French Quarter tour today? Oh, I'm definitely ready for it. We've been uh, practicing the stomach and the gut just a little bit <laughs> to get prepped for this, but there's a good chance I might be like four or 500 pounds after this, uh, this whole trip. After this day. The first place that we're going, actually, let me just quickly tell you about New Orleans. It's one of the oldest cities in the United States and the French Quarter, which is where the French first came and settled on the banks of the Mississippi River is the original part of the city. The first place that we're gonna go is the most historic, the most iconic coffee shop in all of the French Quarter. Maybe in all of the United States. So the first place that we're starting, we're beginning, we're launching off this ultimate tour of the French Quarter is Café du Monde, or the Café of the World. It dates back to 18, I believe, let me just check that fact, but I think it dates back to 1862. And it started originally at the French market. And now it is just a sprawling open air courtyard. One of the most iconic scenes and place to sit to have a coffee and to have a special beignet, which I'll show you what that is uh, in the entire city of New Orleans. We gotta try Cafe Ole and also black coffee. Both, right? I'll take two coffees. Does it come with a foundation of powdered sugar on the bottom? Oh yes, like always. What's your biggest tip about beignets? You cannot take, uh, you cannot breathe while you take a bite. Otherwise <laughs> you're gonna choke on all the powdered sugar. <laughs> Micah, are you just eating the powdered sugar? Open air, some jazz music in the background. You come here to drink coffee, but it's a special type of coffee. And then also the beignets. Beignets? Beignets? Beignets, right? Beignets. 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 Deep fried little pillows of dough just submerged in powdered sugar. You want one with a lot of sugar on it, don't you like There's no shortage of powdered sugar. You gotta lean over? You definitely wanna lean <laughs> over. Do not take a breath. Do not breathe in. Do not breathe in. Hold your breath until you take your first bite. All right, cheers, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, so the actual, the actual dough is not really sweet, I don't think, right? No, not So at the all. sweetness is all the powdered sugar. All the powdered sugar. Yeah. Because the actual dough is it's amazingly pillowy mm -hmm. and then fried on the outside and crispy. Nice, good crisp on the outside. I love them. Okay, I get it. I get why there's so much powdered <laughs> sugar though, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everybody, if you look around, I'm sure everybody has a powdered, must powdered sugar mustache. Yeah, but this is not just any coffee. This is coffee with chicory. And so as the story goes, coffee was first brought to New Orleans by the French. But at some point throughout history, there was a coffee shortage. And so they ran out of coffee. And so they started using these chicory wood chips. I'm not totally sure. It has a bit of a similar kind of taste, a dark kind of roasted fruity flavor, similar to coffee. And so they started substituting chicory for coffee until today when they serve, I think now is a combination between real coffee beans and chicory. Yeah. It 
it's creamy. Oh, you taste that full cream, that full, full milk in there for sure. It does have a bit of a woody taste to it though, for sure. I think it could be a little bit stronger and I would enjoy it even more. Derek is a coffee roaster. Derek, what do you think about the coffee? I... It goes perfect with the beignets. So traditional dark roast, so you're gonna have a lot of smoke uh, within it. You definitely get like that woody, nutty flavor within it as well. And the chicory definitely comes through, and it, it pairs perfect with the beignets. I think that's, I think that's the thing. It's like, it's not the greatest coffee that you'll ever have, mm -hmm. but it's the nostalgia, it's the history, mm -hmm. even just knowing that there was a shortage of coffee in New Orleans, and that's why they started substituting chicory makes it even more meaningful. Yeah, has to be followed with coffee. All that we're left with is a, a cloud. Don't cough on this, or you have a cloud of powdered sugar. That was good. Next up conveniently, literally like a, a one minute walk down the road is the next place where they invented the mufuleta. There we go. Central Grocery, the home of the original mufuleta. Walk inside of here, it is, it, I mean, this is a grocery, a full grocery, an Italian grocery, all sorts of Italian products from different sauces and pestos and beans to all sorts of pastas. And then I think at the front they have all sorts of deli meats, they have cheeses, and you can order the sandwich here as well. Can I just get one of the original mufalettas, please? Thank you very much. Enjoy. It's like a pie. Yes, sir. And this is huge. Look at it next to my face. It's literally the size of a pie with a weight to go with it. Gotta kind of open it from the bottom or maybe it's the top. Wow. And so I think it all begins with this type of bread, which is the special type of mufaletta bread. From the appearance, it looks like a gigantic hamburger bun, but from feeling it, it's much more, more dense. Yes. Has a real much like crunchier crust as well, but the top you can see is full of sesame seeds as well. Look at the layers of it, the thickness of that bread. I love, you can I'm gonna, see like the fresh olive oil as well. Yeah, and, and I love the how there's full olives just sliced and packed within that sandwich. Cheers. cheers. Mufaletta, the original from 1906. Mm. It's the olives that totally make it. Mm -hmm. As well as the, the olive oil from the preservation of the olives, I think that just kind of soak into the bread. Yeah, you get a good amount of sweetness from the olive oil, yet yeah, you still get that salty flavor from the salami, from the ham, and also from the olives, and even the bread. Yeah. Like, I'm amazed at like how like it's dense, yet still like incredibly moist. Like it, mm. It's kind of oily, but like holds holds up. Yeah. And then the, the meat, the salami, the ham, the provolone, the cheese, it all is like so neatly stacked. Yes. 
Uh, onions and garlic. Onions, gar oh yeah, there you can see that layer of olives. Yeah. That's what's powering this entire sandwich, but the, the green olives specifically. There are pickled peppers in there, I believe. Some carrots, and you just see the herbaceous mixture in there as well, plus the olive oil. No wonder they cut it in quarters, though. Although it would be cool to pick up the whole thing and bite out of it. Pretty sure if you ate one of these yourself, though, you would be, you would need a nap. If you ate a whole one yourself. You'd be done for the day. <laughs> I could take this. I could eat this all day. I am like blown away and absolutely shocked, to be quite honest. Like, again, how you said it, like, there's no possible way this would ever like be invented these days because it's too simple um, mm -hmm. of ingredients. But it's like simple ingredients paired well together and prepared properly. Yeah. You, like you can't beat it. The meat is great, the cheese is great, the bread is great, but that olive salad is what it's all about. That was so good. And you can never get enough of somebody using a paintbrush to brush your sandwich with olive oil and salad and spices and garlic and all of those herbs. From here, maybe we'll walk around a little bit and then we'll go to the next place to continue eating. And welcome to Bourbon Street. This is for sure one of the most famous streets in New Orleans, the most famous streets in the French Quarter. And it's especially known for its nightlife, although I'm here right in the middle of the day, so it's not too busy, it's actually very quiet. But if you come here in the evening, it's just walking only packed. But I'm just enjoying this walk around the French Quarter because of the architecture, the, I love the balconies, the wrought iron, the beauty, the character. It's so cool. Next up on this ultimate food tour of the French Quarter, we're going to a place that's called Coop's Place. They specialize in both Creole and Cajun food. The only thing about this place is that, I'm not sure how, I guess they are pretty strict, but it is a bit of a bar at the same time as a restaurant. Their food is really good, but it is a bar as well. So it only says big sign on the front door that says you must be 21 years or older to enter. I'm especially excited to eat their rabbit sausage jambalaya, yes. Or rabbit, oh, it's rabbit and sausage rabbit jambalaya. And sausage. Now we know why it's 21 and over. It is really kind of like a tavern. It's a tavern actually, yeah? Really bar, yeah. bar oriented. Kind of bar. So unfortunately we got into Coop's place. They immediately said no filming and so we decided to get it for takeaway. Fumes coming off that. That's the jambalaya? Yeah. Oh man, yeah. You popped open that etouffee and that smells incredible. We were gonna do a little bit of a, I mean a talk about the differences between Cajun and Creole while we were sitting in, in, in Coop's place. But actually, this is even better sitting here in the plaza. Yes. <laughs> so really, for the most part, New Orleans would be more considered the heart of Creole cuisine, whereas Lafayette would be considered Cajun. Cajun country, Arcadian. And what exactly, Derek, is gonna share with us, really yeah. the, some of the key differences between Cajun and Creole from uh, ethnic perspective? Yeah. yeah, so historically, ethnically, um, like it's speaking in really general terms, uh, Creole is predominantly your African, like West African, along with Spanish influence, kind of blending and mixing together. Um, and in Cajuns, they are the French Canadians that came down um, and started to settle different parts of Louisiana as well. Because you know, uh, historically, like you have, Louisiana is just an interesting place. Uh, originally settled by the French, uh, then bought out by the Spanish, and then Louisiana purchased and everything, and uh, the U.S. took over as well. Slave trade was part of a big part of it. Uh, so during transatlantic slave trade, you had tons of Africans uh, that were being brought over and came over, and then as freedom and everything else happened, 
the blending of the cultures took place. So yeah, it is a, such a unique, interesting history and just place in general to be. I love it, love it, I love it. But now we got two different dishes and just from the surface, I know one of the main ingredient differences Creole often uses tomatoes, whereas Cajun often doesn't use tomatoes. So we got an etouffee, which is a seafood stew. There's shrimp in there, there's crawfish, there's tomatoes in there, there's okra in there. And there's so much stew over that, that I believe there's, I believe there's rice at the bottom, but the rice is not even visible. Etouffee? Oh, I got a shrimp in that bite, mm. but it's the flavor of crawfish that I taste. Yes, so I mean, shrimp, craw shrimp and crawfish should be really similar. Size is gonna definitely be a little bit different, but mm, flavor-wise. The crawfish, I think the crawfish is coming through more than the yes. shrimp flavor. Agreed, man. Great. And the roux on that is nice and thick. Like that is, whoo, that is good. Okay, should we dig into the jambalaya? We can. So there's rabbit in there as well as sausage and then the jambalaya. Especially in New Orleans, a lot of things are mixed now yeah. as well, right? Yes. A lot of restaurants do serve a combination of Cajun Creole. Yeah. Additionally, jambalaya is also kind of influenced by a Spanish paella, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Derek had the first I bite got, of that jambalaya. I got, uh, nope, I'm done. I got no words. No words. <laughs> uh oh. Oh man, a big chunk of jambalaya on the pants. Mm. Man. Salty. Oh wow, yeah. Salty, smoky, um, just like a good punch with the seafood. Oh. I thought it was gonna be a little bit mushy because it looks kind of thick. It almost looks like a rice porridge, actually. Mm -hmm. But that is so good. The rabbit is just there, like, melted into the entire porridge like jambalaya it reminds me of like bacon somehow like i think that smokiness i mean i mean that like it reminds me of bacon that smokiness mm. the etouffee is good but the jambalaya is where it's at i'm shocked at the depth of flavor when it comes to this jambalaya like typically other places around the country you'll get jambalaya and it's like okay eh, whatever no big deal here, you take a bite, swallow, chew everything, and you're still tasting and tasting and tasting, like long after the actual bite. And it is Yeah, phenomenal. actually, the aftertaste is incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it just lingers on your tongue, the smokiness. It does. Oh. This one, there's so many different meats and proteins in here too. The sausage, the rabbit, shrimp, crawfish. Mm. It's all about that jambalaya. I just want to take a nap in it. Oh, not gonna leave a grain of rice. That went down really easily. I think we could eat like five of these if we weren't going on a full food tour. I think we would eat five of these if we weren't going on a full food tour. Okay. Literally on the last bite, it just started downpouring kind of out of nowhere. Uh, we're hovering under this tree until it gets Whoa, we might, we might need to make a run for it. <laughs> it's coming in. Yeah, I think we better make a run for it. <laughs> Still raining, but we decided to make a run for it. And well, because the place is pretty close, we're going to that place right across the corner there. It is a hole in the wall grocer. It's an old place. I know it's a 24 hour place. We're definitely gonna have a po' boy over there and maybe see what else they have to continue with this food tour today. Here, open this. Oh. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that some of the best food in New Orleans comes from grocery stores. Yes. The back of little supermarkets, yep. You gotta go sideways. A little grocery store, everything from popcorn to instant coffee are available. If you need a shaver, if you need some coffee filters, if you need some duct tape, it's all available here. And then towards the back, there's actually a little line 
Uh, all the way towards the back is the deli sandwich counter shop where you make your order. Just enough space to make a line. That's their distinguishing factor is the wow sauce. So we're gonna get the all that jazz, a medley of grilled ham, turkey, and shrimp, Swiss American grilled tomatoes, grilled mushrooms, tomatoes, French bread, wow sauce. Thank you very much. Wow. Hey, I like your Caesar's dressing video. Oh, Probably thank you very much. Thank you very much. There it is. Oh, it's heavy. It's already leaking a little bit. And I think one of the great things about this place is there's like no, no extra space to maneuver, to move, to even stand. Even when you're waiting for your order, you're just kind of like, like putting your face into some mayonnaise. It's awesome. Okay, and then of course no, no place to eat at all. It's only takeaway. Let's come back outside here. Oh, where it is still raining. <laughs> it's always a good sign when the paper is transparent. Oh, that's the wow sauce. The, the wow oh, sauce has completely saturated how appropriate for you. two layers of the paper. Oh, look at that. Oh, all the mushrooms, the cheese. There's shrimp in there too. Oh, oh it's so saucy. That is sloppy, Not some of the paper. juicy, <laughs> and oozing. It might be a dangerous move to try to open it, but I have to see everything that's inside so badly. So we're gonna risk, risk the opening of the all that jazz po' oh boy. <laughs> oh, look at that. The key component is the wow sauce. They literally call it the wow sauce, mm. which is just smothered into everything. It's so juicy, it's so wet, and yet it holds its shape. And the bun, the loaf is so soft. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh man. Mm. Oh. How are you on? Go, go oh. ahead. Oh, you guys ready to go back? No, we're good. Just watching you guys enjoy that. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Awesomely tasty because it's like the best of everything combined into a single sandwich with melted cheese and oozing sticky wow sauce all over the place. I wouldn't know what that wow sauce is made of. It's <laughs> almost like a honey mustard, almost. And mayonnaise at the same time? Yeah. Almost an aioli at the same time too. Mm. You gotta give us a taste. Mmm. It's so good. That is so rich. <laughs> yeah. So rich. Are you still still connected? <laughs> the highest concentration of melted cheese you could possibly have yeah. in a single loaf of bread. This is much different. This is much different than some of the traditional po' boys that you'll find around the city and throughout the state. It's much different. But yeah, it's worth. It's at least worth trying once because it is something special and something different. Especially that sauce. I'm still shocked. It's so much going on. It's so rich. It's so many contrasting things like cheese and American okay. cheese and mayonnaise. And yet somehow it oddly just all fits together in this warm, cozy, sticky, soggy, oozy, sloppy, messy po' boy. And it is amazing. <laughs> For our next place, and this is a, uh, it's gonna be an amazing meal. It's one of the most highly regarded restaurants in the French Quarter of New Orleans. They have a little bit of a uh, dress code. So it's time to dress up for our next meal. All right.
Let's go. They sat us in the back room, I guess. Maybe in the front room you have to have a, a dress coat, a suit coat, which I wasn't. But we're here at lunch, so it doesn't, I don't know. Anyways, uh, happy to sit in the back room. And it is like, it's a little more relaxed back here, actually. The, the front room was pretty intense, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Family cheers, oh, thank you. Andrew. Andrew offered to take our photo. Cheers, thank you, Andrew. We're taking our photo. I love this. Good. That was Andrew on the video camera. Thank you, Andrew. Jazz Fest, October 10th. Caesar Van. Awesome. Thank you very much. This restaurant has been here since 1905. So the food is especially French Creole. French Creole, yes. With a seafood. Or? Most definitely. So okay. you've got these chefs that came in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Because um, there, there's other restaurants that have the same situation. They come from France. They use the French way, but okay. then they incorporate it into the local food. All right. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. So that I know what you're up to with that. You might need this. Thank you very much. Oh, you pour it in. Nice. Thank you very much. All right, the appetizers have come. She just brought the seafood gumbo, the shrimp roumelade, which is extremely famous here, one of the most famous dishes that they popularized at Galatoire's. Another thing that I can't wait to try is the oysters Rockefeller, which were actually invented at a restaurant nearby called Antoine's, but they also serve very good oyster rock oysters Rockefeller here that I couldn't wait to try too. They're so bright green. An oyster on the bottom of that with a combination of spinach and herb mixture. And then maybe broiled on top. It feels kind of crispy on the top, but kind of fluffy and foamy and herbaceous and very green and a bright green. I don't know if you're supposed to shot it or you're supposed to spoon it. Uh, I'm a, let's try both. Let's, let's no. shot it. Okay. I definitely did not get it all. <laughs> it's huge, yeah. Wow. There we go. Okay, probably should spoon that, I'm guessing. Because mm. it's more than one mouthful. Wow. That is unique. Warm and homey is what comes to mind when I taste it. Right. It tastes like a puree of, it is a puree of herbs and spinach. Yeah. Almost foamy in texture. Mm -hmm. And then you get that wonderful, nice muscle and oyster down at the very bottom of it. Like and melt in your mouth oyster at the bottom. Yeah. Totally different from any other oyster dish that I've ever had, I think. Pam and Ying on your first oyster Rockefeller. Ying? <laughs> no, it's but it's good. It's amazing, right? It is really good. I really like the green sauce. Yeah. But that that's puree. Surprise because it's vegetables Whoa. and Wait, herbs can you, are my favorite. Can you lift that up? Wow. I love the bright green color, huh? Can I hit the roumelade with some lemon? You guys all like lemon, right? Derek? We need the truck. Oh. Mm. You immediately taste the horseradish in there, but it's not overpowering. Mm. It's kind of like a combination of cocktail sauce and. It tastes like cocktail shrimp, but with the cocktail sauce and horseradish all mixed in and with a nuttiness. Very refreshing. It's got horseradish. It's like. Because I kind of want to look into the insides of it. It tastes really fresh. For this one, I will cut it in half with a, look at the bright interior green. Look how green, how bright popping green it is. That's amazing. And then the melty oyster on the bottom. Did you just eat that? Kind of do have to eat it all in one bite, whether you shot it or eat it with the spoon. 
Because otherwise it kind of doesn't come apart. But I would say, yeah, but mm. Oysters Rockefeller. That was amazing. Next up for gumbo, one of the ultimate of all Louisiana dishes. And this is a seafood gumbo. You can see there's whole oysters in there. There's shrimp, beautifully thick from the roux. And roux is the combination of fat and flour used to thicken and to, to flavor a gumbo like this, I believe, right? Mmm. Mmm. That is really rich. Wow, yeah. In all the right ways. Oh. Seafood is fresh. Oh, that shrimp. It almost just feels like crab. It's that stringy. It's so thick and hearty, but doesn't feel too heavy. I don't want, I don't want it. It is really good. Mm. You're probably going to have like five. The, the crab flavor in that gumbo <laughs> is unmistakable. Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful food. Wow. Wow. Nice. That looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ying got the rib. Wow, the juiciness of that. Oh, nice. Yin. Pam got the sardou, Yin got a steak, and then Derek and I each got a fish dish. I got the sautéed redfish with uh, a sauce made from crab and mushroom, and then Derek got the fried deep trout. Deep fried trout, trout with covered in a, almond. Yeah, it's covered in a mountain almond of dean. almond dean. Oh, oh man, I can't wait. I love fit. Oh, how firm. This redfish is, it's so firm. It's, you can see it's topped with a bit of a seasoning or a dry rub. And then a chunky sauce with butter, mushrooms, crab in there. Wow. Mm, that sear, the butteriness of it, the sauce with crab with Mushrooms, so good. Per cooked perfectly, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing for the trout. Like, I don't know how they cooked it this well, but it's like, especially with it being fried, but it's like cooked through, cooked through all the way, yet still, like flakes off easily, nothing's overdone, nothing's underdone, like it's perfectly cooked. Yeah, I like, <laughs> I hit the wall. <laughs> I think I've bounced off the wall. <laughs> Moving slower. I need to go exercise for like a year. <laughs> maybe I can take another bite. <laughs> this is the last Those meal. Are ever wondering. Uh, yes, this is all in one day. <laughs> <laughs> it is all in one day, and it is much <laughs> like it's not even six o'clock yet. Like it is, it's been a lot of food <laughs> in a short time of time. So good. The entire meal was excellent. I think my favorite part though were the oysters Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you've got brandy, foncho, orange, cinnamon stick, and clove. Wow, that smells amazing. Alright, watch out. Alright. Wow. Like, look, check this out. Wow, on fire. That's very cool. All right, and then you want to do a key thing. You don't want to do it too, too long because you okay. don't want to burn off all the alcohol, and then you wouldn't have any alcohol. In the okay. Coffee. So now we're going to add the coffee, put out the fire at the same time. Okay. Wow. Oops, still on fire. <laughs> Awesome. 
So all right. I'll get you some sugar. You might want to put a little sugar in just like you need all right. coffee. Cafe Brulot. Very cool. That's so awesome. Ignite it on fire. Play with it. Something I've never had before. Have you had this before, Derek? Never. Yes. I've never had it. Interesting to try it. I love the show. You have not had it. <laughs> Wow, that is very festive tasting. Yeah. Very, yeah, very, um, You're, I feel like it's like a spiced punch almost. Yeah. Um, what is the, what is the, um, the famous apple cider, or yeah, it's almost apple cider or, or the eggnog. Yeah. Maybe because of the, because of the spices, because of the cinnamon, because of the clove, it almost has an eggnog taste to it. But I mean, with coffee, it's almost a combination of, it's cidery, very cidery, but then with coffee as the base. It reminds me of an apple cider. Um, or just a cider, a spice cider. Yep, um, it's a spice, like, like a spice cider. Wow. Very festive, very aromatic. Slightly fumey, yeah. I think because of the sweetness of the brandy. Yeah, yeah. and the coffee is not like, Damn. it's not overly like, in your face. Perfect ending to an amazing meal. Whoa. And a huge thank you to Jennifer and Andrew for taking great care of us. Thank you for the amazing service. Amazing service, very high quality, very fancy restaurant. Step outside, immediately love that change of pace. You hear the jazz music, the live music, and Galatoire is actually right on Bourbon Street. We weren't sure if we were gonna pull this off because we weren't sure it was possible, but it was just like one street down and right over. So we had to stop here, a place called Brennan's, for one fast dessert to end this tour. The epitome of New Orleans, invented here, Bananas Foster. They invented it at Brennan's, Happy right on a, a birthday celebration. <laughs> Have you ever had Bananas Fosters before? Yeah, here Have at Brennan's? Never here, first time, uh, yep. Okay, special. If you yes, weren't aware. We're excited. Yes. So we have brown sugar, a dash of cinnamon, some butter. I have banana liqueur now. We're going to go ahead and caramelize this. Yeah, blend this all together. Nice and creamy. There we go. This was created last minute for a party for a good friend of the Brennan's family, Mr. Richard Foster. Okay. He had a promotion. Um, and to celebrate him last minute, Owen Brennan decides to throw him a party. So he does. He invites the town, he sets everything up in his restaurant, and decides to tell Ella Brennan, his baby sister, who was the general manager at the time of this party, um, and that he needs a dessert, something special, something that hasn't been done before, something that would wow the crowds. And so she says, absolutely, give me a few days and I'll come up with something really beautiful. And he says, well, no, ma'am, you don't have a few days because people are going to be here in a few hours. Very frustrating. So she gets right to work. She reaches right into her own mother's cookbook to find caramelized bananas, something that they had enjoyed as children. So it's something that they were already familiar with. Not only that, she throws it right over vanilla ice cream, knowing that, I'm sorry, um, knowing okay. that Owen Burnett hates vanilla ice cream. This is her way of getting back at him for giving her such short notice because it is not fancy enough. Not only that, they decide to add a shot of rum to flambe these bananas for the crowds to compete with Antoine's, another world-famous restaurant here in the quarter, um, who is famous for baked Alaska. That is their okay. something special. So, okay. Ella Brennan decided she needed to come up with something special as well. We're going to let this pan get nice and hot, and then okay. I am going to go ahead and flambe. It's going to get a bit high. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. There we are. Nice. And thus, Bananas Fosters were born. And so that was rum? That was, it was rum dark rum. In. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs>
smells so good. It is the best. This was actually so popular that night at the Brennan's uh, foster party that people actually continue to come back into Brennan's and ask for the banana dessert served at that foster party. People who weren't even invited to that party came in to ask for this forcing the Brennan's family to put it on their menu and call it Bananas Foster in homage to their good friend, Owen uh, Richard Foster, who all in all was the original inspiration for the creation of the dish. And it's vanilla ice cream, right? It is. It is vanilla house made. House made. Yes, wow. homemade vanilla ice cream. Please enjoy. Thank you very much. No problem. Oh, amazing. Thank you guys. The story too. No problem. <laughs> Derek was telling me that bananas fosters is your favorite dessert, Derek. Hands down, favorite dessert. But I've oh, never man. had the original. This and the is the real one. deal. So this is the real deal. That was absolutely amazing, and I loved how she told the entire story. It was so worth it. Let's try it. Cannot wait to try it. Half melted ice cream, the banana, the rum syrup. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that is one of the greatest desserts ever. It's not overly sweet. I guess not too sweet. Um, I've had these before, and there's always like too much brown sugar. Or there's too much like caramel. overpowering with the yeah, the sweetness, right? Too much. And here, it's like you still get the wonderful taste of the banana. It's a good balance between the banana and the vanilla bean ice cream, and just like everything is wonderful. It is, it is and that contrast of the cold frozen ice cream to the warm melted brown sugar and butter and the half cooked banana. Oh, it's it is insanely good, yeah. Wow, yes. We could not have chose a better ending to this ultimate tour, food tour of the French Quarter. Mm. I haven't been pausing. It's just nonstop. I'm almost done. <laughs> I could drink it. That's pure joy. <laughs> been my, like it's literally it's been my favorite since like I was a kid. Growing up in Chicago, I had this at some place. Have I'm you had a, ever had a better version than this? No, no, <laughs> no. Not even close. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> So that was the perfect way to end this ultimate food tour of New Orleans, the French Quarter. And yeah, it's just been a fun day. New Orleans is so exciting. There's so much good food. I love the mix of cultures, the quality of seafood, the strategic location, the friendly attitudes, the just happiness and positivity of New Orleans. And that was an extremely fun day. I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. So thanks again for watching. Goodbye from New Orleans, Louisiana from the French Quarter. And I will see you on the next video.